step back into the charm of classic television with the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show. This 1950s sitcom featuring the comedic duo George Burns and Gracie Allen takes you on a delightful journey through the everyday antics of a married couple. Curious about the funny, shocking, and sometimes sad facts behind the scenes? Keep watching, there's a lot more to uncover. Do you have a cherished memory associated with the show? Maybe a moment that still brings a smile to your face. Share your most treasured experiences or anecdotes in the comments below. We would love to hear your stories and memories related to the George Burns and Gracie Allen show. Get ready for a trip down memory lane. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show holds a unique place in the history of comedy television. The chemistry between George and Gracie, portrayed by George Burns and Gracie Allen, makes them a memorable and endearing couple on screen. Gracie's humorous tendency to interpret things in her own way adds a delightful touch to the show. As a viewer, the resemblance between characters in later sitcoms like Red and Kitty from the 70s show may strike you. There's a certain similarity in appearance with Kitty's hairstyle and Red's overall look bearing a resemblance to George. However, it's essential to recognize the distinct charm of George and Gracie in their era. One notable aspect of the show is the inclusion of a television within the storyline, allowing George to interact with the events on the screen. This unique element adds a cool and innovative dimension to the narrative. Many fans express a desire to own the complete collection of episodes, particularly those featuring the iconic TV gimmick. It's worth noting that introducing this classic sitcom to younger audiences could bring a fresh appreciation. Viewers have observed that when shared with older children around 17 and up, the show starts to resonate, drawing them in after a few episodes. In conclusion, the George Burns and Gracie Allen show, with its timeless humor and distinct characters, has the potential to captivate new generations if given more exposure. Cheers to the charm of Burns and Allen and the delightful neighbors featured in the show. In crafting the George Burns and Gracie Allen show, the bulk of episodes underwent a streamlined production process. Shot within a day using two cameras, each episode was later edited and presented to a preview audience. The crowd's live reactions were recorded, steering clear of artificial laughter. Post-screaming, George and Gracie concluded each episode with a live say goodnight, Gracie scene. Reflecting her real-life attention to detail, Gracie Allen meticulously decorated the show's television home. The connection between the show's setting and her personal life added a distinct touch to the overall presentation. The broadcast of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society marked a milestone, being the first nationally aired episode. In the early days of television, the absence of coast-to-coast -coast coaxial cables meant viewers outside the broadcast range had to await kind scopes shipped to their local stations. These practical aspects, coupled with the unique quirks of Gracie Allen's real-life inspiration, added layers of authenticity to the show, contributing to its lasting charm. Gracie Allen, a central figure in the George Burns and Gracie Allen show, often showcased her kitchen prowess on screen, presenting a facade that contrasted sharply with her actual aversion to cooking in real life. Despite her culinary theatrics, meals in the Allen household were either expertly crafted by the family chef or enjoyed at restaurants. In a nod to her personal history, Gracie adorned aprons while cooking, paying homage to her Aunt Clara. This familial connection became a recurring theme as Gracie spun outrageous fictional tales about her relative. During later seasons of the show, George and Gracie's afterpiece vaudeville routines took center stage. Emerging from curtains plastered with the names of cities and theaters where they had performed during their vaudeville days, the duo added a touch of nostalgia to the show's closing moments. These insights into Gracie's culinary antics and the duo's vaudeville roots provide a unique perspective on the show's dynamics, showcasing the blend of fiction and reality that define the George Burns and Gracie Allen show. It's a glimpse into the carefully constructed world that captivated audiences during its broadcast. The early live seasons of the show feature several episodes now in the public domain, including the Klebob card game, the property tax assessor, and the income tax man. Notably, George Burns, recognizing the practicality of filming, invested personal funds to establish McCadden Productions during the second season. This move allowed with the transition from live broadcast to filmed episodes, despite CBS's reluctance to expand the budget. The Burns swimming pool, occasionally visible in live episodes, cleverly employed an 18-inch water tank on wheels. 
This ingenious setup swiftly rolled on and off the stage utilized lighting techniques to simulate pool depth effectively. Overall, the show's early public domain episodes and the strategic shift to filmed production showcase George Burns' commitment to the series, both creatively and financially. These behind-the-scenes insights add layers to the understanding of how the George Burns and Gracie Allen show evolved, offering a distinct perspective on its production nuances. Gracie Allen, initially hesitant about television, joined the George Burns and Gracie Allen show in the 1950s at the persuasion of her husband, George Burns. Despite her reluctance, she became a central figure, showcasing her kitchen skills on screen, a stark contrast to her actual aversion to cooking. The show's unique touch included Gracie's culinary antics, where she adorned aprons as a nod to her Aunt Clara. In the eighth season, Gracie decided to retire, expressing frustration with George's continuous contract signings behind her back. Despite George's attempt with a spin-off, The George Burns Show, Gracie did not return. The show's dynamics shifted, revealing behind-the-scenes struggles. Gracie, often seen rolling cigarettes on the show, was, in reality, a non-smoker. Another interesting tidbit involved B. Benedict, credited with a misspelled last name due to a typo that persisted for luck. In some episodes, her first name also suffered a misspelling as B. These anecdotes from the show's history add layers to its understanding, shedding light on Gracie's personal conflicts and the quirks of the cast. It's a glimpse into the straightforward yet captivating world of the George Burns and Gracie Allen show where reality and fiction blended seamlessly. In its final two seasons, the George Burns and Gracie Allen show introduced a unique plot device, George's Magic Television. This device allowed him to spy on friends and family, a concept initially rejected by sponsors as unrealistic. Despite the threat to drop the show, George Burns held his ground, later jesting that he'd invented closed-circuit surveillance television. When the series concluded in 1958, it held the record as the longest-running situation comedy in television history. Over its eight-year run, Gracie Allen showcased her distinctive approach to wardrobe, never appearing in the same outfit twice. In some episodes, she underwent up to three costume changes, adding a dynamic element to the show's visual appeal. As a testament to the show's enduring popularity, it left a lasting mark in television history, a fact evidenced by its record-setting run. Gracie Allen's wardrobe choices, featuring a multitude of outfits without repetition, became a distinctive hallmark. The series ended on a high note, solidifying its place as a significant milestone in the world of television. In the latter part of its fifth season, from episode 33 onward, George and Gracie added a unique touch to their show. Following the weekly sitcom plot's resolution, they closed almost every episode with a three or four minute afterpiece, a vaudeville routine performed in front of a live audience. During the series, Gracie Allen, unbeknownst to the public at the time, dealt with a heart condition, experiencing several mild heart attacks. Unfortunately, she succumbed to a fatal heart attack on August 27, 1964, at the age of 69. A recurring gag throughout the show involved George Burns attempting to sing a song that began with the lyrics, I'd love to call you Rose, dear, but roses fade away. The running joke was his inability to finish the song titled I'll Buy the Ring. Burns eventually released a recording of this song on his album George Burns Sings. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the unique elements and challenges faced by the cast during the George Burns and Gracie Allen show. It's a glimpse into the dynamics of the series, where vaudeville routines, health struggles, and humorous running gags played a significant role in the show's overall narrative.